We live in the spotlight. When it really comes down to it, each and every one of us lives in the spotlight. It may not be the same spotlight as professional athletes or Hollywood stars, but each of us lives in the spotlight. We may not be driving down the road, and when spotted by everyone in the car next to you, and they want to stop you and get a picture of you, it may not be that kind of spotlight. We may not walk in the neighborhood park, and a crowd starts to follow us trying to get an autograph. Probably not that kind of spotlight either. We probably, when showing up to any restaurant, do not have random people walking up to us wanting to take selfies with us. But as Christians, we live in the spotlight. The world out there is watching and waiting. At every moment, the world wants to pounce on anything that we Christians do. How we treat others. How we carry ourselves in public and in private. And it's not just our actions, but it's also our words. Who we communicate with and how we talk with them. The words that we naturally use in our conversations. Every action we take and every word that our mouths make are a witness of Jesus is at stake. But we're not just in the spotlight of the world. We are under the spotlight of God. God not only sees what we do and say in public, but he catches everything in private. He even knows the thoughts and attitudes of our hearts. Think about that for a moment. Every thought and attitude that you have in your heart and mind, God knows them before you even think them. I know for my sake that this truth is a very humbling truth to ponder. Because of the many choices that I have made, really even the terrible thoughts that I have just thought, I do not want any of those things to be in the spotlight. With that in mind, John writes, We know that we have come to know him if we keep his commands. Whoever says, I know him, but does not do what he commands is a liar, and the truth is not in that person. But if anyone obeys his word, love for God is truly made complete in them. This is how we know we are in him. Whoever claims to live in him must live as Jesus did. Dear friends, I'm not writing you a new command, but an old one, which you have had since the beginning. This old command is the message you have heard. Yet I am writing you a new command. Its truth is seen in him and in you, because the darkness is passing and the true light is already shining. Anyone who claims to be in the light but hates a brother or sister is still in the darkness. Anyone who loves their brother and sister lives in the light, and there is nothing in them to make them stumble. But anyone who hates a brother or sister is in the darkness and walks around in the darkness. They do not know where they are going because the darkness has blinded them. There are really two main thoughts that John has for us in his words today. First one is obedience to God's commands, and the second is living in the light compared to living in the darkness. And really, both those thoughts are an explanation of each other. First, let's look at obedience to God's commands. As we've already established, I don't think any of us want to live in the spotlight. And we don't want the spotlight to shine in our lives, and especially our private lives, or even our thoughts and attitudes of our heart. John says that if we keep God's commands, then we are truly testifying that we know him and that we believe in him. But did you notice the other side that he said? The trouble is, for me, I fail at keeping God's commands every day. 
Maybe you're in that same boat as me. Does that mean that you and I do not believe or know God? John even goes on to say that if we say, I know him, and then do not follow his commands, what does he call us? Then we are a liar. And then he says we need to live as Jesus did. Anybody else feel the burden of that and say there's no way I can live up to those expectations? I want to live in Jesus. I want to know him. I want to live as Jesus did. And I do believe in Jesus, but I've got to tell you, I don't always live like him. He was sinless. And we're supposed to live sinlessly? In fact, the scriptures even say more on that, that anyone who claims to not have sinned, that the truth is not in them. So if any of us are saying that we're sinless like Jesus, we don't have the truth. So how can anyone show that they know and believe in Jesus by living like him, as John writes? Right now, with all this going on in my mind, I feel like the Apostle Paul. And actually, I'm always struggling like Paul when he wrote, I do not understand what I do. For what I want to do, I do not do. But what I hate, I do. And if I do what I do not want to do, I agree that the law is good. As it is, it is no longer I myself who do it, but it is sin living in me. For I know that good itself does not dwell in me, that is, in my sinful nature. For I have the desire to do what is good, but I cannot carry it out. For I do not do the good I want to do, but the evil I do not want to do, this I keep on doing. Now if I do what I do not want to do, it is no longer I who do it, but it is sin living in me that does it. So I find this law at work. Although I want to do good, evil is right there with me. For in my inner being I delight in God's law, but I see another law at work in me, waging war against the law of my mind and making me a prisoner of the law of sin at work within me. What a wretched man I am, who will rescue me from this body that is subject to death. But Paul didn't stop there. He answers that question there in chapter, or verse 24 with the next verse. Thanks be to God who delivers me through Jesus Christ our Lord. Jesus Christ. Yes, Jesus rescues us from our bodies of sin, death, and pain. He removes us as prisoners to the law to now be free to carry out the law through him. Which is exactly where John writes us in our reading today. He says, yet I'm writing you a new command which is true in him and in you, because the darkness is passing away and the true light is already shining. God the Father has taken the spotlight off of our lack of obedience to his commands, and now he shines it on Jesus Christ and his complete obedience. Jesus is the true light that is already shining. You see, the light that is shining in the darkness is Jesus Christ and is Jesus Christ in and through you. This is living in the light. What John is preaching and proclaiming to us today is not an impossibility. Obedience to God's command is certainly possible through Jesus Christ, but only through him and what he's done for us. He is obedient for us. And because of him working through us, he shines his light through us every day as we seek to follow him and to obey his commands. The light that John writes of is not a light that is exposing all faults, but rather is a light that is revealing the only source of the true light. Jesus Christ. 
Jesus is the source of all goodness, mercy, and grace. Jesus brings you joy when the world brings you suffering. Jesus brings you forgiveness when the devil wants you to feel guilty. Jesus gives you a purpose in life when the world wants you to fear your impending death. Jesus is your light. Now live in that light. Doing a quick word study on the word light will reveal that it comes from the Greek. And from that same word in Greek, in English, we get photo and photosynthesis. These two words are rather revealing in John's words choice for this section. Lighting is critical to make a good photograph. If you've ever tried to duplicate a professional photo, or try to take one and compare it to those who have taken it professionally, it is very hard to get the lighting just right. So also, photosynthesis. Without the correct exposure to light, sunlight, photosynthesis will not be able to help a plant completely grow if it's not getting enough sunlight. Now take this back to your life. Jesus is the correct lighting for you. When you live in him, when you believe in him, when you focus on Jesus and trust in him for your forgiveness, the photograph of your life is clear, pristine, and beautiful. When you move forward in life and take steps to grow, if you turn to Jesus as your source to guide you and to carry you and to feed you with all the nutrients, you will grow and be strong and prosperous, reaching higher and higher because the rays of Jesus' light are filling you with the spiritual nutrients you need to be healthy and happy in him. The light is here today, dear friends. The light of Jesus Christ is here shining down on you today. As the words flow from my mouth today to you, he is causing you to grow closer to him and stronger in faith in him. As you pray to him, as you confess your faith in him, as you sing songs of praying, praise to him, the light of Jesus shines ever brighter on you and in you. Let there be light as you live in the light. Amen. Please stand. The peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. The Lord be with you. Amen.